we are here today to honor 32 fallen California heroes and add their names to this beautiful memorial. The last name we added was Ralph Henry Johnson two years ago at the 25th anniversary of this memorial. He was a Congressional Medal of Honor recipient and his uh, name had not been added to the memorial. When the Vietnam Memorial Honors Committee was first getting formed in, 19, in 2014, Assemblyman Chris Holden introduced Assembly Joint Resolution 33, urging the U.S. Department of Defense to add the 74 fallen sailors from the USS Franklin E. Evans to the Vietnam Memorial in Washington, D.C. That still has not happened, and that needs to happen. But the California committee voted to add the names of 22 Californians to the memorial. So proudly we hail at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight. Oh, the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rockets red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say does that star-spangled banner yet wave oh the land of the free and the home of the brave i pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Let's bow our heads. Heavenly Father, we come to you today to proudly support those families and members of units whose members are being honored here today. They were lost in battles, both the heart and the soul and on the field, but they haven't been forgotten. We want to bless all those who have come here that are comrades that they may be with their brothers someday. Let us hold our heads up and be proud of these men who gave their lives for this country. God bless us all. Amen. I am delighted to be here to help honor the 32 California veterans 
and unveil their names on this beautiful, beautiful California Vietnam Veterans Memorial. Thank you all for attending, especially thank you to Beth Gaines and to Jim Frazier. Uh, Assemblyman Frazier, may, you may not know this, is the author of AB 287. When it became law, it created the California Vietnam Memorials Honors Committee. These dedicated committee members, along with the Vietnam Veterans Chapter, um, Vietnam Veterans of America Chapter 500 Sacramento Valley, partnered with CalVet to host today's event. Thank you, Assemblyman Jim Frazier, for authoring and for Governor Jerry Brown for signing AB 287 into law in 2013. I guess I'm not as good at this as Pete because I cannot list all of the people who put on this lovely event today. These are the folks that are behind the scenes that you see doing the heavy lifting out here and making sure that we have this beautiful day of remembrance. The event would not have happened without all of these folks and I sincerely thank all of them for your hard work. Tomorrow, March 30th, 2015, marks the 50th anniversary of the first U.S. Group ground troops in Vietnam. Governor Edmund G. Brown declared tomorrow to be Welcome Home California Veterans Day here in the Golden State. Each family here that is representing a loved one's, loved one's name who has gone on this site will be provided with a copy of the proclamation that the governor has signed. Please let me be the first to say welcome home to all of our veterans and to all of our veterans' families here today. We're gathered here to honor our fallen. Many sons, daughters, fathers, brothers, and sisters did not return home from the Vietnam War. This memorial allows us to pay tribute to all of our veterans. The special memorial allows each and every person a place to honor, reflect, mourn, and remember. We all owe a debt we can never repay. I am delighted to be here today with you. In January, as Pete said, Governor Brown asked me to serve as the Acting Secretary of CalVet. After two years of what was to be my ultimate and last job, that of retirement, there was no other topic or mission that could have drawn me back to full-time employment. As the daughter of a veteran and the wife of a former Marine who served in Vietnam, I have always been honored to have these people in my life. Now I have a bigger honor. It is now my heartfelt honor to be California's advocate for the new, nearly two million veterans in California. I give you all my word, and for that matter, all Californians my word, that I will do my very best work ever for our veterans. Today we are, on, we are honoring 32 individuals by unveiling their names on the California Vietnam Memorial. Ten individuals are already included on the National Vietnam Memorial in the District of Columbia. Twenty-two individuals are California veterans killed while aboard the USS Frank E. Evans on June 3, 1969, and now honored here on California's memorial. The act of permanently engraving the names of our veterans who died in Vietnam becomes an indelible record of their honorable service for the generations to come. There are now 5,657 California veterans on our Vietnam Veteran Memorial Wall. Far too many. I would like to close my comments today by quoting some of President Abraham Lincoln's words from his Gettysburg Address of 1863. They are still true today, 152 years after they were first spoken. We cannot dedicate. We cannot consecrate. We cannot hollow this ground. The brave men, living and dead, who struggled here have consecrated it far above our poor power to add or detract. The efforts of our governor, our legislature, 
the Vietnam Veterans Memorial Honor Committee, our Vietnam War veterans, our veterans' families, and CalVet, all working closely together, brought us here today and made this the most important ceremony possible. Welcome and thank you for coming out to pay tribute to our brave veterans, all who have sacrificed everything to defend our nation and protect our freedoms. It's my honor to be here this afternoon to recognize the courageous, courageous acts of all of our California heroes and their families, and to commend them for their dedication to our country. Today, we pause to remember a special group of soldiers. These are individuals who exhibited the utmost bravery, selflessness, and devotion. However, until now, have not been recognized with the full respect they deserve. My bill, AB 287, helps to fix this problem by allowing the names of the Vietnam veterans who were not originally included on this memorial, but who have died as a direct result of injuries or illness suffered during the conflict, to be added on. Thank you. There are several reasons why some veterans were not included on the original memorial at the time it was constructed. Some were inadvertently left off the original list by accident. Many had, had died as a direct result of injuries from the line of duty. And many have passed away from the un, unseen wounds and mental trauma as a result of their service. This afternoon's ceremony gives overdue recognition to 32 of our soldiers who have not been memorialized on these panels, 10 of whom are currently recognized on the Vietnam Veterans Memorial in Washington, D.C., and 22 of whom lost their lives aboard the USS Frankie Evans when a destroyer sank on June 3rd of 1969. It is my hope that adding of these names to our California monument helps show gratitude for the heroic deeds that these individuals exhibited in the line of duty. To see this legisl legislation come to fruition today and to see it make a difference in the lives of veterans, families, and friends is truly a moving experience. It is my hope that this bill will help to bring a sense of peace and closure to the families and friends of those who have fallen while defending our country. I would like to share that this bill has a special personal significance to me as well. <clears throat> I too share the difficult experience of losing a loved one as a result of the conflict in Vietnam. My Uncle Rick. who was my mentor, had also passed away being exposed to Agent Orange during his time in Vietnam. When I had the option to author this bill, I made it my top priority. It was the first bill I introduced when I entered the assembly, and it was also my first bill signed by Governor Brown. In saying that, I would like to personally thank all the sponsors, supporters, volunteers, and my committee members and untold hours of dedication by these committee members to make this day a reality. Their dedicated work has not gone unnoticed by me. You are de definitely an inspiration to keep me going on behalf of veterans on behalf of the two million veterans in California. Without your drive and collaboration, this bill and this event would have never been possible. The letters and the cards that were sent to the governor were very impressive. To work with such a devoted, passionate group is truly humbling, and I am very proud to work together to improve the lives of veterans and their loved ones each and every day that I'm in the legislature. Again, thank you for being here today.
to commemorate and honor the lives of these 32 brave individuals. So many of our Vietnam veterans never received a proper thank you or a proper homecoming. AB 287 is my way of saying to those who had never heard it, thank you. Our next speaker I'm going to take out of order is going to be Mike O'Connor. Mike enlisted in the Army in 1966, and his aircraft was shot down in February of 68. If you look off to the right, you will see a small table, one chair, with the POW MIA flag on it. Mike spent more than five years as a prisoner of war in Vietnam and was relie finally released on March 5th of 1973. For his service, he was awarded the St Silver Star, the Distinguished Flying Cross, three Purple Hearts, and an Air Medal with V for Valor device. Please welcome Mike O'Connor to the podium. Thank you, thank you. First of all, it's uh, my honor to be here. Um, what a wonderful turnout and a wonderful event. Um, thank you so much for everything that you have done. Put my glasses on here. I want to thank uh, all of you for attending today's dedication of adding 32 names, I guess, 31 ahead. More names to the California Vietnam Veterans Memorial, especially those family members and loved ones, as well as the members of the commission who have accepted a very difficult task. Names are a powerful reminder of the sacrifice of those who gave their lives in the service of our country. Shortly after I returned home, I visited the National Monument in Washington, D.C. with my parents and family. I intended to simply leave a first cab patch from Vietnam next to the names of so many of my buddies and leave. After all, they weren't actually buried there. No reason to get emotional. It just seemed like an appropriate thing to do while in our nation's capital. However, as we slowly descended along the walkway and I began to read the names, so many names, of young men who died in the very prime of their life, I began to become overwhelmed with terrible loss. After spending five and a half years in Vietnam, I thought it was pretty tough. But as we finally stood before the names of my crew and of the other crews from my unit, I found I couldn't control the tears pouring from my eyes. As we stood there, I couldn't help but think also of their families, friends, and loved ones. So much pain. I also knew that there were hundreds of thousands of others who suffered terrible injuries and emotional scars that would never completely heal. Every soldier in Vietnam lost their youth, lost their innocence, and lost part of their life. I also realized that the names of the men and women on this monument and other monuments across this great country and in places all over the world our great tribute to those who gave their lives not only in the service of their country, but also for the freedom of humanity. America is the only great power in modern history that has fought not to conquer foreign lands, but to help free the oppressed. But that is small solace to those who have lost their loved ones. To paraphrase a portion, again, of one of President Lincoln's letters to a mother who lost her son during the Civil War, I pray that our Heavenly Father may assuage the, appease the anguish of, our, of your bereavement and leave you only the cherished memory of the loved and lost and the solemn pride that must be yours to have laid such a costly sacrifice upon the altar of freedom. This dedication today is not only about the 32 names but about 32 more stories of sacrifice and loss. This is a monument that will serve as a reminder for generations of the great cost of freedom. This wall of nearly 6,000 names is also a reminder of the tens of thousands more of family members and friends and loved ones who will carry their loss for the remainder of their years. Each name on this wall is the story of a hero, 
of their life, of their loved ones, and countless tears. But we can do more than remember these heroes. We can continue their fight for a better America and a better world. We can continue to support our brave service members and their families. We can help support improved care for those who have served and returned. And we can begin to heal our own sorrow by healing the scars of others, of their buddies, and of their families. We can also make this a better country by being involved in our communities and helping our neighbors and friends and even taking the time to come here today. Thank you. Today we honor these heroes and we also honor the sacrifice of those who love them. And I ask that we not let this end here, but continue the battle for which they gave their lives. Thank you. Our little ceremony um, goes back well over uh, 10 years. Uh, every June 3rd, regardless of the day of the week, uh, survivors and family members gather in Long Beach, which was our home port, and we honor the 74 that were lost on our ship. So without further ado, I would like to read the names of our 22 shipmates, and if you would all stand, please. Most Americans see only the numbers that the Vietnam War created to us who survived the war and to the families of those who did not. We see faces. We feel pain that these numbers brought, uh, created. We are, until we pass away, are haunted by these numbers because they are friends fathers, husbands, wives, sons, and daughters. There is no noble war, just noble uh, warriors. So on behalf of Sacramento, chapter, uh, Sacramento Valley Chapter 500, Vietnam Vets of America, welcome home, brothers and sisters. Welcome home. Nearly three and a half million Americans served in the United States military during the Vietnam War and related conflicts in Southeast Asia between 1959 and 1975. More than 58,000 U.S. service members died during the Vietnam War, including more than 5,800 Californians. Many suffered physical injuries. Others suffered invisible wounds of war, including post-traumatic stress disorder, and other mental health conditions. Decades later, Vietnam veterans are being diagnosed with diseases and disorders associated with their Agent Orange exposure and other toxic herbicides. Unfortunately, to many of these veterans have not received the help and care they need to live healthy and productive lives in peacetime. In addition to those with medical conditions that are direct results of their service, there are many who suffer from unemployment, poverty, homelessness, and substance abuse. Treatment of our veterans reflects profoundly on our character as a state and as a nation. The state is committed to improving current services and implementing new programs for those who serve and their families. Our Vietnam War veterans earned our everlasting gratitude. I urge all Californians to join us in welcoming home our veterans and assisting them in every way possible. Now, therefore, I, Edmund G. Brown, Jr., Governor of the State of California, do hereby proclaim March 30, 2015, as Welcome Home Vietnam Veterans Day. Thank you. Welcome home, fellow veterans. Thank you, Marty. Um, before we go on further, 
I would like to make an announcement um, for any of you, any of you that uh, are going to be here at the memorial on May 24th. We have our 16th annual reading of the names. Starts at 07 in the morning, and we read until o dark 30, or until all names are read. One year we did it with flashlights, but. Uh, all 5,855 names are going to be read on the 24th of May. So as president of the Vietnam Vets of America, I'd like to take this opportunity to invite each and every one of you to attend. Uh, at this time, I would like to bring up one of our counterparts, um, Dawi Mam Pam. <laughs> Dawi Mam Pam is a... Uh, South Vietnamese captain that came to the United States. He's also an associate member of Chapter 500. Ma'am Pam. Uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Ma'am Minh Phan. As an associate, uh, Vietnam veteran of America and former captain of South Vietnamese Army. First of all, I would like to thank all of you for you attending this celebration today. Second, I am very happy to take this opportunity to introduce to you the Vietnamese Friendship Women Association in Sacramento to be here today with us. Women Associated in Sacramento, please stand up. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, today we honor 32 more heroes being added to the California Vietnam Veteran Memorial. We continue to pray for them. Attending the memorial celebration today, under the bright sun and beautiful day, I cordially salute all of my comrades arm, the Vietnam veteran of America. Welcome home. And uh, I absolutely never forget to send my deepest thanks to the family who have their lovely relative sacrificed in the Vietnam War for our freedom. Thank you, thank you, and God bless.
I'm here today to um, to maybe to honour the 22 Californian guys who disappeared on the uh, on the 3rd of June 1969. I was a crew member on board HMAS Melbourne that time, and to say it's one of the most harrowing moments of my time would be an understatement. Uh, I have been a member of the uh, association of the USS Frankie Evans for a few In Australia we now have laws that stops them from associating with each other. The police will get them and lock them in jail. <laughs> maybe, maybe something that is a Californian uh, legislator can look at. Um, no, and uh, I was a crew member on board of, of that morning. And uh, I've been a member of the association now for a few years and I attend their reunions with my wife. And I'm so proud and honoured to be here today to see what the California legislature has done. Um, the fight is not over, as we say, until the 74 names are on the wall in Washington, I will not be satisfied. And I know all the members of the, of the USS Evans will not be satisfied. So all I can say, thank you. I will now take this back with me to, the, to Australia and talk to the members of the HMAS Melbourne's Association and see if we can now maybe write as an association to the people in Washington. I've written personally and uh, had no response, but sometimes that's what you expect from your politicians. But, uh, <laughs> but um, just to let you people know, also know that the, all the survivors that were in the water were actually saved by Australian sailors. Some, some of them went in with um, motorboat to rescue them, some jumped off certain parts of the ship and some actually dived, jumped off the flight deck, which is roughly 70 feet above the water. And every one of them guys that was in the water survived. So I can thank the Australians for what they did because without that we would have been here to try and honour a lot more of the, uh, of the people off the USS Evans. And there's one thing associated with um, these type of memorials in Australia we say an ode to the falling. The USS Evans Association has adapted that and we say that and I'd like to recite that for you now. If you'd all be upstanding. They shall not grow old as we the left grow old. Age shall not weary them nor the years condemn. But the going down of the sun and in the morning we will remember them. lest we forget. Thank you very much. Greater love has no man than this, that he give his life for his friends. And I'm honored to be here today. And like Pete said, if you'd like to join in, that would be wonderful. So, God bless America, land that I love. Stand beside her and guide her through the night. From the mountains to the prairies to the oceans, why we fall? God bless America, my home, sweet home. Please uncover. Let's bow our heads for Almighty God. Heavenly Father, we give thanks for this day. This is the day you have made. And there are so many here that are so appreciative that they're here this day to celebrate it. Bless them all that are here, Lord. But our main purpose was come before you and give thanks that we have the opportunity to put these heroes on this wall, this memorial here. It's been a long time, a long fight. We are not exhausted. Because you've given us a heart, a heart of faith heart to fight and endure and our hearts will be strong at least we forget and I know that we've got to give thanks the political ideas that themes that ran through this Sacramento it just warms the heart Lord and I know that they use their wisdom their votes they just swelled up within us and I know that these people 
that made this decision. They did it with a pure heart, a good conscience, and a sincere faith. And we give thanks for that. We give thanks that Jesus Christ is our Savior and that we bond together right here on this ground and this day right now. There is more Navy, but there is Air Force. There's Marines. There's Army. All this blood flows together. Flows together in the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Retreat!